Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 49th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. We're going to be going over another small buy-in uh, hand history. This is from a $10 tournament I played online. I guess we'll go ahead and get right to the action. I do not know anyone at the table. And don't really know much about the way anyone plays. So, right here I open to a min-raise with Ace-King. I think that's fine and standard. Uh, you'll see some players with Ace-King particularly in the lower state games, make a large raise because they want everyone to fold or something like that. But you have to realize that you don't want people to fold whenever you have a very strong hand. You want to induce as much action as possible. So right here, we make a raise. We get called, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. And then we get shoved on. And right here, we have to figure out what this guy is shoving with. And then we should think about what's the worst hand we would call with. So I think we can pretty much ignore the fact that this player called. His range is almost always going to be relatively weak. So that just means we need to win about 42% of the time to break even. So what range do we think this guy is shoving? And it's tough to say, but I think he would shove a lot of the, the good pairs. A lot of pairs in general, probably like sixes are better. Maybe ace-jack suited are better and king-queen. Something like this. I think this is going to be a reasonable shoving range here. And this is even a little bit on the tighter side. So let's assume that they have this, and we have... Well, let's look at our hand first, ace-king. You'll see that we have 54% equity, so we have him crushed. So, of course, we're going to call with ace-king. Ace-queen, we're also going to have him crushed, but it's much closer. You see here we're 47%, and remember, we need to win 42% of the time to break even. So let's give us ace-jack offsuit, and I think this is where it's going to start becoming closer to a fold. And you do see ace-jack offsuit is going to be a fold. If we make it suited... That makes it about break even. So it, basically, what we're looking at here is ace jack suited and ace queen offsuit. Let's see how king queen suited does. I think it's still going to be a fold, but let's check it out. You see, it is still a fold. Um, then on the pair side, we should probably call with something like nines are better. That's my guess. Let's see if it's about right. Well, nines are really good. So I may have incorrectly folded something like eights here. I see eights are still going to be slightly profitable, and sevens are going to start to dip closer to the break-even point. So I would have called with nines here if this was me today, but I, you know, looking at the math, I should probably call with something like, uh, uh, probably, probably with eights as well. Now, if your opponent happens to be a little bit tighter, you'll find these numbers are a little bit wrong, so you should consider scratching off the bottom end of the, the calling range. Like ace-jack suited may be close, um, pocket eights may be close. And so those hands you can consider folding. And also if you think this player behind you is ever going to call with a premium hand that, that's going to call the shove as well, then you should certainly consider folding those hands. But with Ace-King, you just have an easy shove. We're going to get it all in and we're going to be happy most of the time. So I actually do shove. And now, to my surprise, TC Stan also calls. And right here, he needs to win about 33% of the time. So let's give the first guy this range. And then we just said what my range is going to be. It's going to be ace-queen or better, ace-jack suited, and pocket eights or better. And then let's give him ace-king and see if he comes out of this with 33% equity. And you'll see this is actually a fold in this guy's seat, which... It's kind of interesting. You know, most people think, oh, Ace King, that's really good. But you have to realize if J Card Shark has a tight range, or if anyone has a tight range in general, your Ace King really is not in that great a shape, especially whenever there are multiple people in the pot. So believe it or not, this is just a fold with this guy's Ace King. And you need to think about that whenever you do decide to flat, and then it, you expect someone to shove behind you. You know, a lot of players will call here thinking, okay, if someone shoves behind me and the open, the initial razor goes all in, I can go all in with my hand and I'll have them all crushed. But that's really not the case with Ace King. So um, if he had something like jacks instead, I think that's probably going to be much more of a call, as you see it is. Um, tens in this spot, I probably would have folded tens, perhaps incorrectly. Uh, no, about correctly. So in his shoes, I would have called jacks or better, and that's it. And you need to be able to think ahead about what's likely to happen and figure out if that's the play you need to make. So we do get it all in, and a queen comes, and unfortunately I lose. But I still think we play the hand fine, and... And I think JL, well, same initials as me, I think JL003 played his hand fine, and I think TC Stan is the only one that actually messed up his hand with Ace-King, interestingly enough. So that's that for this week. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com.
Thanks for watching.